What up fishes? Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna teach you how to prepare giant clam, AKA gooey duck or geo duck and in Japanese middle guy, live clam. Oh, this thing is firm and beautiful. Smell like the sweet ocean. Let's get to it. Today, all right. Oh, yeah. All right, Sushi Gang, let's get started. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And here it is, Gooey Duck, Mirugai Giant Clam. Very, very uncommon here, especially on the East Coast. This is from Washington, 3,000 miles away from South Florida, still alive. So, a few fun facts about the Geo Duck, or Gooey Duck, or Gawi Duck, G-E-O-D-U-C-K. Japanese is called Mirugai. And the Mirugai species in Japan is definitely a lot smaller. So this one here, which is indigenous to Washington, is very, very sought after. Now, giant clam can live up to 168 years, an average 140 years. These species are unfortunately three to six, seven years maximum. And the reason why you don't see this very often is because its popularity has skyrocketed. In my 16 years of sushi, when I first came across a middle guy, it was probably an average 10 to $12 per a pound. Today, this one is roughly 36 to $40 per pound, and it's only gonna yield probably 20 to 30%. So the, what makes this species so unique is the largest of the clam family, and most clams don't have this protruding piece here. And giant clam, like most clams, are, have to be eaten uh, live and prepared live. So inside this shell here, usually the tongue thing sticking out of most shells is actually a foot. It helps it move it around. The geoduck, the middle guy, surprisingly has this long siphon that these two holes here siphon out all of the water and it burrows itself and digs all the way through the sand and spits it out here. And they burrow, I mean, anywhere from three to 10 feet down, right when you're walking on the shoreline where the water kind of comes up on the shore, they're right below you in that Washington, Seattle area. So this part is the edible part. Usually inside here, we can make a soup or some kind of stock. Um, it was a little dangerous to consume raw, and you have to know what you're doing in here because the, um, the liver and a few other parts are not very, very consumable. But this is actually the heavy part, and this is gonna be the waste, unfortunately. We're gonna make some soup out of it, but it's not what the high prize is. The high prize is this part, and we're gonna blanch it in water because we have to remove this outer skin, and this is gonna shrink to about half the size. So get an idea. All right, so we're gonna start off at 2.4 at approximately 36 to 40 dollars per pound. I'm not gonna give away all the secrets, but that's a ballpark of what most people are paying. Today I got it from True World Foods. Big shout out to True World, love their product. This flew all the way from Washington, still alive as you can see. Incredible, incredible species. Oh my God. It's, and my favorite thing is when I crack this open, it smells like the sweet, sweet ocean. Like an oyster times 10. The process for Miro Guy is very simple and it's all about being delicate. As you can see, the shells are very, very easy to pop open. And once we remove the shell and its intestines and the unedible part, we're gonna be left with this long siphon. Now, what we wanna do is, the siphon has this very tough, outer, almost reptile kind of skin. We're gonna blanch it for 10 seconds, ice shock it, and then the skin's gonna peel right off and we're gonna be left with this beautiful white, almost like a conch meat color. And then we're gonna get to work to butterfly it and eat it as is, Sona Mama.
This part here, I'm gonna keep it. I know what to do with it. I'm gonna cook it, kind of like a sushi chef treat. The rest of this part, I don't really use it. Some people use it. You got a good recipe for it, let me know. Also, beautiful shell. You can use it for what you want, decoration. Sometimes in Japanese, uh, in sushi we'll do is, uh, you'll actually order the whole middle guy for your table and we'll slice it and we'll put it back here. So we'll clean out the shell a little bit, make it look very pretty, and we'll put some garnish in here and we can put all the, uh, the meat right back into here, which is a very, very cool display and very expensive. Now we're gonna remove here. It comes right off, it's very, very uh, soft to work with. So I kinda just pull this off here. And then inside, it gets even more of a uh, biology kind of glass. Now also a lot of water just came out. So let's see also what we wasted. All right, the shell itself, that's half a pound. And then we're gonna use about right through here. So that's gonna be waste and all that water. There's a lot of water weight. You can see how much waste already. Now let's move that to the side. Okay, here's our meter guy. Here's, here's the left of what we're gonna be working with. You see it's still uh, siphoning naturally what it's doing. So the meter guy itself, we are at about three quarters of a pound. That's what's left before we even still preparing it. It's still waterlogged, still has skin on it. And it started off at like two point something pounds. And we're talking about $40 per a pound. So this piece is about $120 approximately. And now we're down to already at three quarters of a pound. All right, so now we have the remaining part here. This is still alive. And before we serve it, right before we serve it, you'll see the sushi chef, sometimes they'll slap it with their knife or they'll slap in their finger and the piece will come alive. They do that to tense it up so you get that crunchy taste. We're gonna blanch it real quick, remove that skin and let it relax and just kind of come to its natural ending place. And then before we serve it, last touch and a circle of life. You can see it's opening up right here. It's your top part, okay. See there. Okay, put it in for 10 seconds. There we go. Beautiful. All right, let's bring it back to the, uh, the sushi bar. Okay, 10 seconds. Now already you can see that the uh, outer skin here has shriveled and I can feel it's still alive, so we're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this outer skin carefully and it's gonna reveal this beautiful white meat. So here we go. Get your mind out the gutter. Boom. <laughs> and there's the outer skin of the Mido guy. All right, so I'm gonna uh, put this back in the ice water and clean it off a little bit. Already you can see how much more appetizing it looks as far as you know being clean, undiscolored, and no bumps or little barnacles or bites in it. And here's the skin. Uh, I do not know if you're gonna do anything with this skin. If you have a recipe, let me know. That's the <laughs> gooey duck sausage. I like that, but the skin is extremely tough. Almost like I said, like a reptile. And there it is. That's the skin that comes right off. We're gonna literally polish it up and being gentle, because we don't wanna kill too much. This is called tewashi. Every sushi bar has it. Extremely helpful. So let's remove some of this discoloration. Not hard, it comes right off. Also, it's alive, so you, wanna be, you don't wanna push too hard. You wanna keep that firmness, but you don't wanna hurt it too much. And as I do this, it gets very firm in my hand. It does not like to be thrown around and tossed around like this. I don't think anything does. But you can still see, it's standing up straight. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. That's because it's still alive. It will not do this if it's not alive. That's, look at that. If it was dead, it would go, you'll know. I want to go right in the middle so you get perfectly two even pieces. Beautiful. And 
inside, once I open it, you can see these two kind of uh, siphon channels and we're gonna clean it out. And the smell right now is like I'm just at the ocean because this thing was just leaking everywhere. It was holding water and now it's on its, kind of its last leg, literally. And my goodness. Woo. Oh, that is pure ocean. And now it looks like a, you know, a, a conch, a clam. It looks a lot different than when we first saw it. It looks like a nice white fleshed, nice, uh, you know, white looking meat kind of thing to those who like that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna clean these out so you can see a little bit of sand in here sometimes, which is great. It's nature, we wanna see that. And as you see, every time I touch it, it responds. As you can see, it doesn't like to be manhandled. No one does. Other side. That's actually most of the work. Now that we have the uh, Mido guy like this resting, we usually wrap it up and we wait till service. And we have about 36 hours, maybe 48, before this really gets too, uh, too soft and no longer retains that crunchiness. And we want that crunchiness. So that's why sushi bars don't carry this very often. It's expensive. It uh, yields very little. Let's do a weight check before I actually slice this. All right, and we are left with approximately nine ounces of workable mirugai. So those are the majority of reasons of why mirugai is not very common in a sushi bar. One, it's from one place in the world, which is Washington. We don't get Japanese mirugai in America. Two, very expensive. Three, it is live and needs to be eaten immediately, cannot be frozen, and the customer will know how fresh it is. So most sushi bars say, forget that stuff, just stick to the regular frozen program. That is way too much for us to handle, and it's a big loss. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut into netta, which is gonna be the sushi pieces, and then I'm also gonna do sashimi. In Japan, again, most of the time, you would just order the whole mirugai. It's a celebration. It's also a power move when you order the whole thing. They're like, wow, this guy just ordered the whole mirugai. Out here in the Western world, we get a bottle of Don Julio. Woo! Don Julio, one, two, three, 1942, sparklers! In Japan, we get mirugai. <laughs> That's your sparklers. <laughs> okay. So I'm touching it, very nice and firm. I'm gonna remove kind of this uh, uh, siphon, um, siphon channel kind of nose part. I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I wanna show you guys actually something pretty cool. So here comes the first piece. And think about how important it is not to waste any of this. You see how it curls up? And I get a little score here. And we give a little tap sometimes to show its freshness and then it curls up like that. So now it's nice and curled up. We'll do one more. See how it's curling up. So now these are very hard to mold in the sushi because now it's it's firmed up. So when I do like the, the usual um, sushi thing, it's very uh, like, it, it won't stick. So what we do is we kind of mold it and then we do a piece called nori obi. Nori obi means seaweed belt. Nori is seaweed, obi is for the, for the uh, kimono. So what we're gonna do is, we take a little piece of seaweed and we just take off that edge piece, just like that. Make it nice and pretty and straight. And we get our miru guy going here. Nori Obi. Okay, so we did two pieces of Mirugai Nigiri, which is the hand molded pieces, very common. Uh, we'll talk about actually per price, how much one of these would cost at the um, weight we discussed. Now, the real boss move, oh, there you guys are. All right, the real boss move in Japan, especially for Mirugai, is you order the whole thing and you get sashimi. 
That's my favorite way of doing mirugai. I don't think uh, nigiri or sushi with rice actually just justifies the uh, taste, the crunch and that real ocean taste. And it's a very delicate taste, so you want it to be, to be pure. You want to really enjoy nature, that sonomama, that as is. So what I like to do when I was taught in Japan is to uh, put it back kind of as the way it was. So here's the shell, a little bit of daikon, a little bit of shiso, nothing too crazy for the video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice it the way, the sashimi way you slice it and it is beautiful to look at, cool to watch, and the way the crunch, the way he slices it, the way I was taught, mwah! All right, so I want to kind of get it firm again, so I light, you can see a little bit of movement, not much, a little bit of toss and turn, and we're gonna put it right back into there. All right, this is the way I eat mirugai. So that's about a third, because I made some pieces of sushi of the mirugai here, but this is a basic uh, presentation of how the sashimi style will be presented. And I tell my customers, try one piece without anything. So you can really see the, the taste of it and appreciate. And the reason why we do all this and we call it moritsuke, which is the kind of the balance, the picture, the beauty, and we give appreciation. And we can see the shell is there and we try to keep it as close as nature. And yeah, for $100 or $200, what you're gonna pay for this, it's not that much, but it's a delicacy. It's a taste, it's a flavor. It's an honor to actually have this. So that's Mirugai. Almost forgot. If you guys like that episode and you want to see more, subscribe, hit that thumbs up, ring the bell. I appreciate all the love. Suck it all around. Let's get the food cost down and the Midu guy up. Woo!